the biggest pieces of snow I have ever seen. This winter packed a punch in southern Nevada. Locals surprised to see snow packed parks in Henderson. <laughs> powerful, damaging winds. It was scary, very scary. And some frigid temperatures. It was windier than average in January and February. It was colder than average in January and February here in Las Vegas. A series of about 10 atmospheric rivers dumped rain and snow across the West. In Southern Nevada, it was a snow feast for some neighborhoods and more of a famine for others. And the reason being, uh, the temperature generally cools off for every thousand feet. It can cool off three, four, five degrees, and that can mean the difference between snow here on the west side and a cold rain over on the east side and across other neighborhoods here in Las Vegas. So here in West Summerlin, you're likely going to see a lot more snow falling and actually sticking to the ground, partially because the elevation is about 3,400 feet. Compare that to the Las Vegas Strip, where the elevation is just below 2,200 feet. That's why the precipitation falls as rain rather than snow. While the wind and cold were more extreme than average, it may come as a surprise that the snow and rain we had wasn't out of the ordinary. National Weather Service data shows the average precipitation for January and February in Las Vegas is just under an inch and a half. This year, January and February delivered less than an inch of precipitation. It only feels like a lot because the last decade has been drier than average. It's just that we've had so many warm and dry winters, The more often than not the last several years, there were some exceptions, but kind of having a normal winter feels like a real busy winter. That speaks more to the last decade or two than I think to anything else or to any future weather changes. But why the change this year? One of the reasons the storm track just ignored La Nina and came right on through our part of the West. I think some of that had to do with the polar vortex up by the North Pole, never really breaking down and coming over to the Eastern US. So they were warm, but we were a bit colder than average and busier than average weather wise. This year's rainfall did help our drought, but really to make a difference, we need many more years of above average snowpack for Wyoming, Western Colorado and Eastern Eastern Utah, which would then fill the Colorado River. It took a decade or two to get into the drought, and it'll probably take about that long to get out of the drought. So this was good, but it didn't solve the whole thing.